This could be judgement day for one Mauricio Pochettino. Chelsea take on Middlesbrough in the second leg of our EFL Cup semi-final, and a loss here could signal the beginning of the end of the Argentines' tenure here. This is going to be a bit of a different preview than normal, it's going to be a rather short video today, with us only just recently playing our opposition, not much has changed between then and now, so I'm going to focus on the two teams, how I believe they will line up, and what I would do to claim victory and send Chelsea to the final. Lads, lasses and the rest of the masses, welcome to the lead-in. I think it's important that we set the scene here because it truly paints a picture of what we should be expecting from this game. Chelsea are coming into this game on a five game win streak at Stamford Bridge, which has become a bastion over the last few weeks, especially during nighttime games like this one is. On the opposite side of things, Middlesbrough have not won a game at Stamford Bridge in 49 years. We go into this game off the back of a win with a point to prove. We are 1-0 down on aggregate and need at least two goals to win this game in regulation time. As mentioned before, this very well could be the straw that breaks the camel's back if we do not win, so the pressure on Poch is almost insurmountable. European football for Chelsea Football Club is a must, it's non-negotiable, and this trophy guarantees us entry to Europe, even if it's a lesser competition like the UEFA Conference League. I don't want to see any excuses, I don't want any interviews saying that we played well after a loss, I want us in that damn final, and anything other than that is a sackable offence in my mind. This is a massive week in our season, with the Aston Villa FA Cup game on Friday too, and we need a good performance here to take that momentum into that game too. We saw from the Fulham game that Pochettino can set this team up to win, to create chances and to play good football. After that level of performance, if we revert back to playing terribly, I will genuinely lose my faith in the Argentine to lead us forward. Let's briefly take a look at the Middlesbrough team first. They, like us, have an extensive absentee list that includes the likes of Bangura, Latte Lath, Lenihan and Tom Smith. Seni Dieng, Sam Silvera and Riley McGree are still all away on international duty, and Sam Greenwood is cup-tied. Good news for us is that Isaiah Jones, who had a very good game against us in the reverse fixture, is supposedly doubtful for this one, which will seriously lessen their attacking threat. I'll be putting Michael Carrick's side into a 3-4-2-1, so first up in goal it's going to be Glover. No surprises here, as expected with Dieng out. The defence is going to be slightly altered from the last fixture, but Vandenberg likely starts on the right of the three centre-backs again. Next to him in the centre will be Fry, and over on the left we shall see Clark, as Engel will be moving elsewhere. Now let's talk about the wing-backs. The right wing-back I'm expecting to be the recently loaned-in ex-Leeds man Luke Ayling. On the opposite side at left wing-back, the previously mentioned Engel will come in to replace the injured Bangura. The two central midfielders are pretty straightforward, Captain Johnny Housen starts again after recovering from a small knock, and next to him comes the ever eagle-eyed Daniel Barlaser. Moving into the attackers, I reckon goal scorer last time out Hayden Hackney will line up against us once more on the left, the right will be occupied by the incoming Rogers, who was suspended last time out, and up top to lead the line in the striker role will be Force. As I said, just a brief overview of what I expect their team to look like, I'm not going to go into much more detail as we've played them before, and know what to expect from them in the second leg. So let's not waste any more time and let's talk about the Chelsea lineup. I'm going to be predicting what I expect to see from Pochettino, then I'll offer my own changes to that side in terms of what I'd like to see personally. So we'll be lining up in the 4-2-3-1 as usual, and first up in goal will be the impressive young Serbian Georgi Petrovic. This man has saved our bacon multiple times already this season, and could be vital in this one if it goes to penalties. The back four is going to be comical honestly, I expect us to once again line up with four centre halves in the defence. So, on the right I'll be putting in Axel Di Sassi, as Malo Gusto has been added to the injury list unfortunately. The two central defenders I assume will be Thiago Silva on the right, and the returning Benoit Badia-Shiel on the left. Over on the far side will once again be Levi Colwell, though Poch could opt to play Chilwell here as he is fit once again. The two holding roles pick themselves, and I expect Poch to use the same setup as the Fulham game, so Moises Caicedo and Enzo Fernandes start in the deeper positions. The three in front of them is relatively straightforward, Cole Palmer is a must start and I think he'll line up on the right hand side as usual. The central player will most likely be Conor Gallagher, who will captain the side. Over on the left I expect Raheem Sterling to play, hopefully offering a spark of enthusiasm on that wing. Finally, down the centre I will be putting in Armando Broya, who had a decent game against Fulham in my mind and should retain his place as Nicholas Jackson is still away with Senegal for AFCON. This is what I am expecting, but what would I personally change? 
Well, first of all, Petrovic, Broya, and the two holding midfielders are not changing, so I'm going to leave them as is. Personally, I'd prefer to see Di Sassi play centrally and not rush Badia Shield back into the fray so quickly, so he'd line up next to Silva instead. I won't be changing Colwell from left back, as I, again, don't want to rush Chilwell back into the team and re-injure him, but I will be changing the right back as I'd personally put in Alfie Gilchrist from the start. Not only do I believe he's better suited to playing at right back than Di Sassi is, but he brings a certain energy and passion to our team that we have been lacking. It's important for us to start quickly in this game and Alfie is the type of player that is going to go hard from minute one. This in turn will help elevate the Stamford Bridge crowd and that will help give the team confidence. I can foresee it now, the first tackle Gilchrist puts in will get a mighty roar from the crowd and set the tone of the game if he starts. I'll also be altering the attacking midfield line. Personally, I believe Palmer should 100% start, but I think it would be foolish to leave out Noni Madueke, who's been terrorising defenders during his short cameos off of the bench recently. And whilst I think Madueke is an excellent impact sub, I'd prefer him to start and get us on the front foot immediately. So I'd push Palmer into the central role and drop Gallagher, who despite his great energy has been a liability in recent games in terms of our creativity. He can come off the bench to be a disruptor late on if we need to control the game. I'd be tempted to swap out Sterling for Mudrik too, as I believe the Ukrainian offers more in that role, but I do think the attacking line needs some experience, even if I don't agree with it. The only other thing I want to add is that I hope Karni Chukwameka is given a decent chunk of minutes. He's coming back from a bad injury, so it would be nice to see him get 20 to 30 off of the bench after his small cameo last time out. So, that would be my lineup, and I'd love to hear yours too, so that will be the question of the day for today. What starting 11 would you pick for this team? Let me know in the comments below with QOTD at the start as always. Now let's talk about the game plan. I think it's best to try and repeat what we saw against Fulham as that performance was one of the best this team has produced since Poch took over against a smaller side. We usually struggle against these teams, but we saw improvements in multiple areas, with Broya looking better, Enzo back to his best, and Levi Colwell putting in arguably his best ever game at left back in a Chelsea shirt. What we did well in that game was that we broke the lines with direct passes from midfield, Enzo Fernandez was allowed to roam, not only getting up the pitch but dropping deeper to collect the ball and then progress us further. He'd spear a line breaking pass into the attacking midfielder, whether that was Gallagher or Palmer who would interchange with him into that central role or half space, and then they would turn and drive at the defence. I think it's very important for us to do this versus Middlesbrough because there isn't going to be much space for us to operate with in this game. We saw from the last fixture that they like to absorb pressure and we found it difficult to make more than a handful of chances which we didn't take. What we also did well in that Fulham game was loading the box, which is a criticism I've had of our team for a while. We rarely do this. We committed men forward into the area so that when one of the fullbacks overlapped, there were targets to find in the box. I think our movement in the box was good too, Broyer in particular getting a few opportunities from near post runs, but unfortunately wasn't able to convert from them. I reckon there are goals to be scored for the Albanian if he continues to get into those positions, but with the lack of an out-and-out -out fullback on either side, I think our wingers will be tasked being the ones to make those overlapping runs instead. As long as we do the basics right and take our chances, then I think this game could and should be an easy one. I hope that we have learnt our lesson from the previous game, and will come into this one showing no mercy. For a score prediction, I'm going to be tentative and say that Chelsea will win this game 1-0, with the Blues going through to the final on penalties, scoring all five with Borough only netting four. We'll have to wait to find out what happens though when the whistle blows, but if you can't wait until then for more insight on this Chelsea team, then I recommend watching this video where I spoke about Poch's struggles at Chelsea and how to fix them. Thank you guys so much for watching, and remember, in the rain or in the dry, keep that blue flag flying high. Come on you blues.